If you use dating apps, you're leaving at least some of your fate in the hands of an algorithm. Dating apps are basically search tools. They use algorithms to make match recommendations using your data, which includes personal info, like location and age, preferences you set, and your app activity. Some daters say apps are poor search tools precisely because of algorithms, since romantic connection is notoriously hard to predict, and that they're micromanaging dating. So how do each of the popular dating apps figure out your matches? The Tinder algorithm used to be based on something called the ELO rating system, originally designed to rank chess players. In addition to logging your own swipes, Tinder scored you based on how potential matches swiped on you as well. ELO is old news though, and now Tinder's algorithm is trained to serve you matches based on how you use the app. The more you use Tinder, the more data it has on you, which in theory should help the algorithm know your preferences better. It also helps Tinder because it's been known to share your data with advertisers and other third parties. Bumble is similar to Tinder in that it uses a swipe model. Where it differs is that only women can message first, and matches can disappear if no one messages within 24 hours. Bumble isn't transparent about how its algorithm works though. All we really know is that if you see someone on the app, they've been active within the last 30 days. So there's no need to worry about matching with inactive accounts. The dating app designed to be deleted doesn't have swiping, nor does it use the ELO rating system. Instead, it uses something called the Gale Shapely algorithm. This Nobel Prize winning formula was created to find optimal pairs and trades that money can't buy, like organ donations. Here's a scenario that shows the formula in action. Say there are 10 single women and 10 single men. How do they get paired up? Well, tell one group, either the men or women, to pick their first choice. And if they get rejected, they move on to their second choice. That continues until none of the people left want to get matched anymore. Like Tinder, hinge matching is not just about the profiles you swipe on. It's also about how potential matches interact with your profile. The more you use Hinge, that is, the more you like other users, engage with profiles, and tell the app when you've met a person, the more the app allegedly understands who you're interested in. OkCupid is an OG dating site that has more robust user profiles than the other apps. Case in point, there are over 4,000 questions to choose from when creating your OkCupid account. You can display political opinions with badges, like the latest pro-choice badge, and there are 60 sexual orientation and gender options as well. OkCupid calculates a match percentage with other users to see how compatible you are. If another user has similar search preferences and responses to questions as you, and is looking for the same thing relationship-wise, you'll have a high match percentage. Grindr, a queer dating and hookup app, predates Tinder as one of the first apps to use location data to pair people. According to the app, it only uses algorithms for security purposes, like deleting spam accounts. So how does Grindr serve up matches to meet? When a user searches for people nearby, the app displays other users who are online that day and applies the user's preference filters, such as age and relationship status, and sorts everyone by distance. Every now and then, it adds some random matches to the mix. These app companies will likely never reveal all their algorithmic secrets. But while we can't control an app's search results, we are always in control of the most important factor in our matches, which way we swipe. <laughs>